Let's learn about limiting and excess reactants. At the top of your note sheet, it's talking about a scenario where you're dealing with pieces of hardware. So in this case, based on having these given pieces, if my final product is supposed to be made to look like this, then I can only make two final products because the only thing I can make is another one of these. Okay, I have a bolt and a nut left over, therefore those would be excess reactants, and in this case I am limited in how many products I can make by the washer. So that's going to be my limiting reactant. If I change it to where my product is this, then I actually can't make any more pieces except for this one out of the whole set that I have. And in this case, the bolt becomes my limiting reactant because I need more of those in order to make another one. So all of these pieces that are left over would be considered excess reactants. A few vocabulary things that you need before we get started are the fact that the limiting reactant is going to limit the extent of the reaction and therefore it's going to limit the amount of product you can make. The theoretical yield is the amount of product that you can produce if all reactants are used up during the reaction. So that means that the excess reactant is the stuff that's not used up during the reaction. So the, again, those are leftover things. Actual yields are the things that you have produced in a real experiment. So what you actually get in lab is your actual yield. We're going to do one example first. This one is not on your note sheet. This is just to explain it. So a fairly common type of question you would see regarding limiting and excess reactants is this one. So the confusing part here is that I have two different masses that I'm given to start with. And that can become very confusing for students because the question is, where do you start? Also, I want you to note that later, as part C asks, I'm comparing this to 105.0 grams of aluminum phosphate. So I'm actually going to use this information to save myself some time as I work the problem. So my point here being that if you read ahead, you can save yourself some time. And I won't have to do as much later if I do the right things first. So let me show you what those right things would be. So I'm going to rewrite the chemical reaction because we are going to need that. And we have two moles of aluminum to two moles of H3PO4. That's going to give us two moles of aluminum phosphate and three moles of hydrogen. Note that even though there are all those twos, twos there, this three makes this a balanced equation and it cannot be reduced. Okay. As a reminder of my givens, I have 100 grams of phosphoric acid and I have 25 grams of aluminum. I'm going to say that this is my unknown because I'm later going to be using a value of aluminum phosphate to compare it to. So the first question was what is the limiting reactant? And what you need to do is actually two stoichiometry problems using each of these. So one problem using aluminum going to my unknown, one problem using phosphoric acid going to my unknown. So I'm going to start with aluminum and I had 25 grams of that. Okay, in keeping with our same format for mass to mass calculations, I would convert to moles of aluminum first, then I can use my mole ratio to convert to moles of aluminum phosphate. And finally, I can convert that to moles. You don't necessarily have to, but I'm going to in this case because, like I said, it's going to apply and be important later. And you get the hang of that by just doing this some more. So first of all, my moles for my molar masses are alone. The mole, or excuse me, the molar mass of aluminum is 26.98. There is a 2 in front of aluminum, so I put a 2 there. There's a 2 in front of aluminum phosphate, so I put a 2 there. And my molar mass of my product, aluminum phosphate, is 121.95. Okay, multiply across, multiply across and divide, and I get, in this case, 113 grams of aluminum. So what this means is that if I have 25 grams of aluminum to start with, I should be able to make 113 grams of, excuse me, aluminum phosphate. Okay? So I'm going to do the same thing with my phosphoric acid given. 
So 100 grams of H3PO4. Going to this time the same product, but I need to use different molar masses. So my molar mass for phosphoric acid is 98 per mole. Okay, that is also a 2 to 2 mole ratio. And my molar mass is going to be the same for my product because I'm going to the same destination. Okay, this math works out to be 124.4 grams of aluminum phosphate. Okay, so the question here is which number is correct? And this is how we use, this is how we determine what the limiting and excess reactants are. So because I have a smaller number here, in this case I can only make 113 grams of aluminum phosphate. In this case I can make 124.4 grams of aluminum phosphate. So what that means is that this lower number is my real theoretical yield because it is based on the limiting reactant, which is, remember, the thing I started with, aluminum. So here, this is my theoretical yield, and this is my limiting reactant. Okay? What that means, then, is phosphoric acid is my excess reactant. I can even figure out how much extra it's going to be, and we'll do that last as just an extra piece. <clears throat> you may find that helpful when you're designing your experiments. Okay? But the next question was, what is the theoretical yield of aluminum phosphate? So again, you pick the smaller number of the two that you get, in this case 113 grams. The percent yield for the reaction, the question was, if I had 105 grams of it that I made in lab, then what is my percent yield. So the percent yield is going to be the actual over the theoretical yield times 100 percent. So actual yield over theoretical yield times 100 percent. So I have 105.0 grams that I said I got in lab divided by my 113 grams that I said was my theoretical yield. And that comes out to be 90 or 92.0 92%, in this case with three sig figs, 92.9%. So what this number means is that based on the information that I have, based on my starting reactants, my reaction was almost 93% successful. So basically I used up almost all of the stuff that I had, but there was a little bit of something that went wrong. Because if it, everything went according to plan, my percent yield would be 100% because I would make my theoretical yield in lab as well. Okay? So some factors that can make your actual yield be lower than your theoretical yield are things like competing side reactions, impure reactants, and reactions just simply not going to completion, like you just didn't let it react long enough. And by definition, because of what the formula is, the percent yield is simply the ratio of the actual yield to the theoretical yield expressed as a percentage. Okay? So let's also go and figure out how much stuff I really have left over. If I have 100 grams of phosphoric acid that I'm starting with, then I can actually go back and figure out how much did I really use. Because remember with stoichiometry, you can compare reactants to products, but you can also compare reactants to reactants. So we figured out that 25 grams was the important part. So if I have my 25 grams of aluminum, how much phosphoric acid will that actually react with? And that's going to be this piece. So I already had my molar mass from the previous question, or the previous work that I did. And this time I'm going to go from aluminum back to phosphoric acid. If you look at the equation again, it's still a 2 to 2 mole ratio. So I have 2 moles of aluminum on the bottom and 2 moles of phosphoric acid on top. Okay, My molar mass I had earlier as 
98.00 grams of H3PO4 per mole. So when I do this math, again, what I'm figuring out is how much, ac how much acid did I actually react my 28 grams with? So how much really got used up? And what I get is 90.8 grams of acid. So again, if I had 25 grams of aluminum to start with, I know that's my limiting reactant. I did stoichiometry here to compare it back to my other reactant to determine that in order to completely use 25 grams of aluminum, I need 90.8 grams of phosphoric acid. Remember in the very beginning question, it said that I had 100 grams of phosphoric acid. So therefore, I can also figure out how much acid is left over. So if I have 100 grams minus 90.8 grams of phosphoric acid, then I have 9.2 grams of H3PO4 left over. So this is how much excess phosphoric acid I have. Okay, so one more time. I have a balanced chemical equation. I have two known values and an unknown value. I have the ability to find yield based on both of those known values. When I find the two yields that I could have had, my real theoretical yield is going to be the smaller number because it has been based on my limiting reactant. That means that my other reactant is in excess. When I have a value determined from lab, like 105.0 that I say I produced in my lab experiment, I can divide that by my theoretical yield that I found earlier times 100% and find a percent yield. Basically, this tells me the efficiency of my reaction. Okay, And finally, if I have my limiting reactant figured out, I can determine how much actual of the other reactant I needed by doing another stoichiometry problem. So this is why we've been working on speed with these, because you have to kind of do at least three of these in order to figure anything out. So in this case, my 25 grams of aluminum only needs 90.8 grams of phosphoric acid. And because I had 100 to start with, that's how much I threw in my beaker or my reaction vessel, then that means that there were 9.2 grams of phosphoric acid left over. That's limiting in excess reactants. I hope that that was helpful, and I hope that you can now solve the question on your sheet. Good luck.